Hello everybody, it's Brian for MBAUsers.com and today I'll be taking a look at my MacBook Air. So in this video I'll basically be showing you everything that I have installed on my MacBook Air. Not the Windows 7 side of things, I think I'll put that in a separate video. Uh, there's not really anything over there except for games, so I don't think I'll do a video about my Windows 7 partition at all. So let's go ahead and get started with something simple over at Dashboard. So this is my dashboard setup. It's pretty much the stock setup, although I do have obviously the iStat Pro widget up above everything in landscape orientation. So this gives you information about the hardware in your Mac. So your processor usage, how much RAM you're using, your different partitions, how your Wi-Fi is doing, uh, various temperatures and fan speeds, battery info, uptime of your uh, notebook as well. So this free widget gives you a lot of great information at a glance and it's uh, pretty lightweight so it doesn't bog down your system at all. So that is it for a dashboard and here's my simple desktop. Uh, I don't have anything on my desktop except for my Macintosh HD partition which is of, uh, obviously the uh, mountain lion partition for my MacBook Air and I also have the Windows 7 partition right there and if you'd like to figure out how much space I've given each partition we'll just go over to the storage tab here and my Mac OS 10 partition is only 70 gigs while my Windows 7 partition is 170 so Windows 7 primarily games like I mentioned earlier Mac OS 10 has everything else of mine on there and this is using a 240 gig OWC SSD I will be doing a review on that very soon so be on the lookout for that um, so I do have my notes widget or excuse me the notes application over here on the left and I use this for pretty much what I need to do for school so if there's anything I need to review or study those will be over here and this is the default notes app so this syncs to my iPhone through Google or iCloud I think I have it set up through iCloud to sync between devices so that is nice and down below at my dock it's extremely simple as you can see I don't have too many applications here these two four six eight applications are the ones that I usually have running most of the time so that's why they are here by default now of course ScreenFlow is what I'm using to record this video so of course that will be in the dock so I have notes of course that launches right when I log in which is nice and then I have Tweetbot which is my preferred Twitter client I also have Skype for instant messaging and voice calls Steam for some gaming. The only game I have on my Mac OS X partition is Minecraft, so the in-game overlay works just fine through Steam for Mac OS X. And of course I have messages for iMessages. That's all I use this app for. I don't use AIM or anything like that anymore. I do use the stock mail client for Mac OS X over something like Sparrow or Thunderbird. It just suits me just fine and I love the quick interface of it. Safari is my, the, uh, the browser that I use in Mac OS X. I don't use Chrome, although I do have it installed just in case there's something I need to test inside of Chrome. And lastly, we do have iTunes. Going to my dashboard, it's also very neat and organized. So for the four folders, I have the other folder, which is here by default. When you first turn on your Mac out of the box or when you do a clean install of Lion or Mountain Lion, and in the other stock apps, these are Apple applications that are here that I don't really use very often. So I don't really have those here. All of these are my third-party apps, more on that in a minute. And of course, I have a folder showing things that are inside of my dock, although System Preferences is not there anymore, so I'll go ahead and move that into other stock apps. And the Auto, auto Start folder has the programs that launch when I log in but these are usually ones that are in the status bar, which I'll go over now, so ScreenFlow, ignore that one. That's what I'm using, again, to record this video. I do use Dropbox. Don't have too many, too much space, but I don't need that much anyway. I use U-Control Pro for my uh, iTunes control. So when I have iTunes going, I could quickly skip between tracks by just clicking one of these buttons up here. I use I forgot what this one's called. iClean Memory. This is the simple application that I use to occasionally free up the RAM in my MacBook Air. It only has 4 gigs of RAM. I didn't opt to get 8 gigs because I simply don't need that much. I haven't felt any slowdowns by just having 4 gigs at all. I mean, Mac OS X is already good at optimizing RAM usage, so I don't really check this too much, although when it gets low to like maybe 20 megs of free space, 
uh, free RAM. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on optimize memory and that will free up all the RAM and bits of information left over in the RAM that I don't need to be open. I do use LogMeIn to occasionally remote control my MacBook Air from let's say my phone or another computer. So very good and it's completely free as well. And I do use iSnap which is great for snapping certain windows to the left or right halves of the display. You can also make it full screen by just dragging it to the top. And I could also use various keyboard commands to do the same thing. So very nice of iStat. So that's what my auto start folder consists of, those different applications that automatically start up and hide themselves into the status bar. So taking a look at everything else, we have all of my third party applications that I use. So these obviously are not my day-to-day -day apps or else they would be in my dock but I do have Photoshop CS5 don't need CS6 so I'm sticking with CS5 I have Air Server which lets me use AirPlay mirroring from my iDevice over to my Mac OS 10 computer also works on a Hackintosh for those who are interested I do have Aperture I've this has been installed for a while I wanted to start kind of getting into editing photos and I think that Aperture is a good way to a good place to start. I just haven't done anything with it just yet. We have Audacity, which I use for when I do product reviews and videos where I do voiceovers or something like that. I'll use Audacity to record the audio from my microphone. I have Cam Twist, let's, which lets you stream video uh, and customize it. I guess that's the easiest way to say. Uh, Citrix Receiver, that's for something else. Uh, Clean My Mac, nice application for cleaning up cache files and other things that you don't need on your computer. Disk Aid, which I use for accessing the file system on my iOS device. FileZilla for FTP transfers. Google Chrome, mentioned that earlier. Handbrake, which is great for converting video files. We have Image to Icons, which takes a image of pretty much any kind and converts it into a dot app friendly icon file we have microsoft excel powerpoint and word pretty much standard for anybody in school i do prefer all of these applications over numbers keynote and pages i mean it's more standard and universal and i like the interface of all three better uh, i have minecraft don't play that too much on here at all i mainly just play that on my gaming desktop Parallels Desktop, which I will be reviewing very soon as well. I do have a giveaway of Parallels 8 planned, so make sure you subscribe if you like to be a part of this. We have Picturesque, which is a very quick editing program for images. So let me go ahead and just take a quick screenshot and show you this. So once you dump an image into it, you could add corners, you could add a stroke around the image, you could add a shadow, add a reflection, and you could also give it a little perspective here. All of these options are customizable. So that's nice. Just a quick look at picturesque. ScreenFlow, which I'm using for recording this video. It's perfect for capturing your Mac OS X desktop at full speed. There's pretty much no lag in your uh, in the recordings at all. Snapseed, which to me it's basically Instagram for your desktop. There's also mobile applications as well, but it has various filters and different things you could do very easily to photos. TeamViewer is what I use for remotely controlling other people's computers. If they need something, if they need help with something, I could, they could just give me their ID as well as their TeamViewer password, and I could go ahead and control their computer and help them out with whatever they need. Uh, theme Park, this is, I used this for opening hidden iTunes resource images like buttons and stuff within iTunes just to check out. The Unarchiver, which is what I use for opening .rar files, uTorrent for torrents, virtual DJ home. I just play with this occasionally to just, you know, mix a couple of electronic songs together and uh, just play around with it and have a little bit of fun with it. VLC, which is a pretty much the must have media player for video files, such as MKVs and whatnot. Wineskin winery. This is for taking windows applications and bundling it inside of its own dot app container and it's pretty much running Windows apps on your Mac OS X computer, just like you would on Windows. Doesn't work with everything. Uh, I tried it with some games and it did work, although there were some performance issues, so trashed those and I should have trashed this as well. We have Xco, which I don't really use for anything. I just have this for the iPhone simulator just to mess around with different things, uh, experiments and whatnot. 
And lastly, I do have WinClone Pro, which is for backing up and restoring your Windows partition on your Mac. So I will be doing a video on this one as well. There's a giveaway planned for this particular app. So make sure you subscribe to check out the giveaways that I have coming very soon. And that is pretty much a quick look at my MacBook Air, my Mac OS X partition, how I have things organized and what I have installed. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with this video, so thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.